Welcome to part 2 of the lecture on global register allocation. In the last lecture, we considered the issues in global register allocation. We defined the problem. We looked at the simple register allocation algorithm based on usage counts and uh, I also gave you an introduction to the linear scan register allocation. Today, we will continue with linear scan register allocation and then go on to Chaitin's graph coloring based algorithm. So, linear scan register allocation is a very fast uh, register allocation algorithm. It uses the notion of a live interval instead of uh, the live range as it is usually done and uh, in applications such as uh, dynamic compilers and just in time compilers the speed of register location is also very important and in such cases uh, linear scan register location finds a place. So, uh, we will quickly review the concept of a live interval. So, if you consider the sequence of uh, instructions you know in linear order numbered in this fashion, then if you take a an interval i j and if you want this to be a live interval for the variable v, then there should be no i prime at which v is live and there should be no j prime at which v is live. So, if this is the maximal interval over which uh, v is live, then this is called as a live interval. It is possible that there are pockets within this interval i j where v is not live. You know it is possible that v is defined and then it is used for a while, then v is not you know used at all for some time, then v is defined again and so on. All these are put together in a single interval. The advantage of doing this is uh, that uh, it is easy to find such live intervals, whereas live uh, you know we can do just one pass over the uh, quadruples or uh, machine uh, virtually allocated machine instructions and then find these live intervals, whereas live variable and live interval a uh, live uh, range analysis requires a complete data flow analysis. So, the data structures which are used are uh, the active list and of course, the list of live intervals. So, we considered this example last time. So, the intervals are stored in a sorted order according to the starting point, increasing starting point and uh, there is also a list of uh, active uh, intervals called active list in which we store those intervals for which uh, uh, registers have been allocated and are still active. So, I explained this example last time. For example, at the point A, there is only one interval I 1 which is active and it will be allocated a register. At the point B, I 5 becomes active, I 1 has already been given a register and it is not yet uh, dead and therefore, we, we have more registers then we can give one to I 5 as well. Similarly, at uh, I 8, I 1 is dead, it is not live anymore, but I 5 is still active. So, and I 8 now gets into the active list if it is given a register. So, this can go on and uh, at point D, we have I 4, I 7 and I 11, all three of them you know overlapping. I 4 and uh, you know I 7 would have been re given registers earlier. Now, if there is one more register available, we can give it to I 11 and then place it in the active list. Let us look at the linear scan allocation algorithm in some more detail now. So, the active list is initialized to null to begin with and then it says for each live interval i in order of increasing start point. So, this is the list of active int live intervals which is stored. So, I showed this uh, already. So, we take one at a time and then process it. So, the first step is uh, expire old intervals. We are going to see the details of this very soon. So, that means the intervals which are dead and which are not active anymore will be removed from the active list and then among the ones which are left in the active list, 
if length of active is equal to r then split at interval i. So, in other words uh, the number of registers which is given to us is r and the length of the active list is also r then we cannot allocate any more registers. So, we either need to push the uh, you know put the new uh, live interval in memory or we need to remove one of the intervals from the active list and give that particular register to the new interval. So, this will be decided by the function spill at interval i. So, if the number of registers used is more than the length of active active list then you know give it a register register i equal to a register removed from the pool of free registers add i to active. So, this is also marked as active and uh, it is sorted by the increasing end point. Now, what is important is uh, to note that if uh, a register i is not given a uh, sorry if uh, the live interval uh, which is considered is not given a register then it does not get into the active list. So, let us now look at expire old intervals. So, this function for each interval j in active so again it considers the active list. So, in order of increasing end point do if end point j greater than or equal to start point i then return. So, in other words uh, the interval is still active it is not dead otherwise remove j from active and uh, add register j to the pool of free registers. So, this is very simple. Now, let us look at uh, spill at interval i. So, let us uh, say last interval in active you know is spill this has uh, its end point uh, you know at the uh, which by it has the, the end point of this particular last interval is uh, uh, the highest right. So, it ends uh, after all other intervals uh, in the active list end. So, if the end point of spill is greater than or equal to end point of uh, i. So, i is our uh, current point then you know uh, so that means, uh, we now have an interval which ends uh, very late much more than the end point of uh, the new interval that we are considering. So, in such a case we spill. So, what we do is uh, we remove the register from the last interval that is which is inside spill. So, register i equal to register spill does this and then the location of spill will be new stack location. In other words we are going to make this particular uh, last interval which is in spill uh, reside in memory all the time. So, the implication is that uh, every time we use uh, a variable uh, in this live interval we are going to load it from memory and immediately whenever we have a uh, assignment to a variable in this live interval we are going to store it into memory location corresponding to the variable. So, remove the spill remove spill that is this interval from active add i to active because now it has been given a new register sorted by increasing end point. So, if this is not so if uh, the new interval that we are considering ends much later than what the last interval in active was then location i is a new stack location. So, we assign the new interval itself to memory and uh, retain the old interval. So, let us look at uh, this does not require any spilling. So, uh, let us consider uh, the second example which involves some spilling assume that there are only two registers available. So, now there are a, uh, you know a b c d e are the five uh, intervals. So, these are the five starting points of uh, the intervals. So, at the point uh, 1 we you know we the a free register is given to a. So, the active list will contain only a at the point 2 a has not yet finished b has begun. So, and there is one more register available. So, we can give b also a register at the point c we have a problem a and b have been given registers, but c requires a new register and we do not have a new register. So, observe that uh, the end point of c is here whereas, the last uh, interval in the active list is that of b and its end point is right here. So, c ends uh, much later than b. So, we are going to put c itself into memory spill c since end point of c greater than end point of b. At point 4 d comes into the uh, you know becomes active 
So, but uh, A has already expired. Now, there is a C will always be permanently in memory, we are not going to consider C anymore. So, B is the only one which has taken a register. So, D is also given a register now. So, at this point B and D are the two uh, variables live intervals which are given registers. At the point E, B has just expired. So, the register of B is freed, only D is in the register. So, a new register becomes available and uh, that is given to E. So, let us see how the situation changes if the uh, end point of C is uh, different. So, for example, it is here. So, so uh, in, in this you know in these two it is the same give A B a register. So, at 1 and 2. Now, when we consider C again uh, A and B uh, have been given registers, but uh, the end point of C is uh, much before the end point of B the last uh, interval in the active list. So, it is B which will be spilled and not C. So, spill B since end point of B is more than the end point of C and give registers to C. So, now A and C will reside in uh, registers at the point D A will retire. So, give D the new register and at end point uh, E C retires expires. So, E will be given the new register. So, this is how register allocation and the spilling happens in the linear scan allocation algorithm. It is a very simple algorithm. So, what is the complexity of the linear scan algorithm? If V is the number of uh, live intervals and R is the number of uh, available physical registers, then if a balanced binary tree is used for storing the active intervals, the complexity has been stated as O of uh, V log R. So, remember uh, you know we want to use a balanced binary tree for storing the active intervals. This is uh, in the or increasing order of uh, end points and uh, empirical results reported in literature indicate uh, that linear scan is significantly faster than uh, graph coloring algorithms and uh, code emitted is at most 10 percent slower than that generated by an aggressive graph coloring algorithm. So, it is not very slow just about 10 percent and this binary tree will help in you know binary search tree will uh, help us in getting uh, uh, you know the intervals at minimum uh, cost. So, now we move on to the algorithm due to Chaitin. This is the most celebrated uh, register location algorithm. So, what is Chaitin's formulation of uh, the register location problem? The problem is actually transformed to a graph coloring problem and the graph which is considered here is known as the interference graph. What are the nodes in the interference graph? The nodes in the interference graph represent the live ranges of uh, variables or sometimes called webs. So, we will uh, we already know what a live range is and we will see what a web is a little later. So, a live range is uh, the set of points where a variable is uh, live uh, and what are the edges in this interference graph? An edge connects two live ranges that interfere or conflict with each other. So, in other words uh, if you consider two live ranges they correspond to two variables. So, we cannot give you know if uh, the two live ranges overlap that is uh, they run through the same points then we cannot give the same register to both the live ranges or two variables. Therefore, they are said to conflict or interfere with each other. Then we put an edge between these two live ranges. Usually the both adjacency matrix and adjacency lists are required to represent the graph because manipulations require both uh, representations. After this what? assign colors to the nodes. So, we are doing the graph coloring such that uh, two nodes connected by an edge are not assigned the same color. So, this is as usual as in the case of uh, the coloring problem. So, if there are two nodes which are connected by an edge then we do not give the two nodes the same color. The number of colors available is the number of registers available on the machine and a k coloring of uh, the interference graph is mapped to 
an allocation with k registers. So, this is the formulation of the problem. Now, let us see how to solve it. There are two examples here. This graph has four live ranges. So, these two live ranges interfere. So, they are active at the same time. So, there is an interference edge between these two, similarly between these two, between these two and between these two. These two live ranges do not interfere and these two live ranges do not interfere. So, there are no edges between these. So, it is very easy to see that uh, we can color this with uh, two colors. So, these two are given one color and these two are given the other color and there is no um, violation of the restrictions. This graph is similar to this, it is just that we have added one edge here, no one uh, node here. So, this node is connected to these three nodes by three edges. So, because of that we cannot give any of these two colors to this particular node, we need a third color. So, this graph cannot be colored with two colors, it can only be covered with three colors. Suppose, we did not have this particular edge, you know assume that we did not have this edge, then we could have given this green, right? this, color, this could have been colored green, but because of this edge these two cannot share the green color. So, what is the idea behind uh, Chaitin's algorithm? The basic idea is uh, that of graph reduction. When can we, what do we mean by graph reduction and how do we do it? So, choose an arbitrary node of degree less than k and put it on the stack. So, the basic idea is if you consider nodes of degree less than k, k is the number of registers or colors available to us, remove that particular node and all the edges associated with it, then continue with uh, such reduction until you cannot do so. So, this process is called as reduction. So, let us see how it helps us. Remove that vertex and all its edges from the stack, from the uh, not from the stack sorry this is a slight mistake from the graph. This may decrease the degree of some other nodes and cause some more nodes to have degree less than k. So, this is obvious, we will see an example soon. So, if you remove a node and some edges, obviously some other nodes will have a degree less now. At some point, if all vertices have degree greater than or equal to k, now there is no way you can uh, remove any node, because we wanted nodes of degree less than k, some node has to be spilled. So, spilling you know we will see what spilling is, it implies uh, loading and storing at various points in the live interval, live over range. If no vertex needs spill, spilling, then you know successively pop vertices of stack and color them in lowest color not used by the neighbor. So, let us look at an example and then see what happens if there is spilling. So, here is a stack, here is a very simple graph which requires three colors and uh, these are the numbers. So, node 1 ha is the only one which has uh, degree 2 which is less than 3, all others have uh, degree 3. So, let us pick one and delete that. So, it goes to the stack, this is the deleted node. Now, these two edges have also been removed that is why they are shown as uh, dotted. So, if you remove these you know edges and the node, then the node 2, node 3 also have degree 2, whereas these 3, these 4 and 5 still have degree 3. So, we can delete uh, one of these two either 2 or 3. So, let us delete node number 2. So, if we delete that then the edges corresponding to these you know connecting the node 2 to 4 and 5 are also removed. So, the graph which is left out is just 3, 4, 5 and all 3 nodes in this graph have degree 2. So, we can remove any one of them. So, let us say we choose to remove 4 instead of 3, why you choose uh, numerical order all the time. So, if we remove 4 and the two edges associated with it, we are left with the 3 and 5 connected by an edge. So, let us remove node number 3. So, we remove 3 then this edge is also gone only node 5 remains there are no more edges. So, we remove node 5 
the entire graph has been uh, deleted and the uh, stack stores these nodes in a particular order. So, now the coloring of the nodes of the graph is actually done in this particular reverse order. Now, we will see how it that happens. So, there are three colors given to us. So, take node number 5 which is the top of stack and give it the green color let us say arbitrarily. Then you have removed 3 and uh, it cannot be given color green. So, let us give it brown and the edge between these two is also restored. Then 4 is removed from the stack, the edges of 4 are also restored, 4 cannot be given these two any of these two colors. So, it is given a new color and then we remove node 2, its edges are all restored. So, once we do that we check the neighbors, so which are 4 and uh, you know this particular uh, 5. So, we cannot give either this uh, light violet color or uh, this uh, green color. So, we will have to give it a different color, it is not connected to this particular node. So, we can give the brown color which is remaining free. Now, we add 1, so 1 is connected to 2 and uh, 3. So, we have to give a color which is different from that of uh, 2 and 3. So, we just chose to give uh, 1 we could possibly have given it green also. So, this now is the coloring of the graph. So, that means, we can give the registers corresponding to these colors to these uh, live ranges and appropriately modify the program corresponding to it. So, let us see the steps in Chaitin's algorithm and uh, include spilling now. So, we identify the units for allocation. So, these are the live ranges or uh, webs, we will see webs very soon. Build the interference graph by including the edges, you know between interfering edges between these uh, live ranges. The third step is called uh, coalescing, coalescing coalesce by removing unnecessary move or copy instructions. So, we will see what happens during this. Then color the graph after this coalescing is over, color the graph thereby selecting registers. So, if uh, there is to be some spilling then compute spill cause simplify. So, we will see all this add spill code and then see whether the graph is colorable we go on doing this until the whole graph becomes colorable. This will eventually happen because uh, eventually by spilling nodes you would have actually reduced the requirement on registers. So, this is the framework for uh, Chaitin's uh, register location algorithm. So, this is the stage which constructs the live ranges or webs, this is the stage which builds the interference graph, then coalescing the live ranges, compute the uh, this keeps happening until there is no more improvement possible, then you compute the spill cost, then simplify the graph and then uh, introduce spill code if necessary, go back to step 1 and keep going until you cannot change it anymore, finally select the registers and color. Here is a very simple example, this is the original code x equal to 2, y equal to 4, w equal to x plus y, z equal to x plus 1, u equal to x star y and x equal to z star 2. So, observe that x is defined twice, okay. all others are not defined twice. Let us number the instructions and then let us uh, assume that there are uh, virtual registers assigned to these variables. So, whatever is defined again will be actually given a new virtual register. So, S 1 equal to 2, S 2 equal to 4, S 3 equal to S 1 plus S 2, S 4 equal to S 1 plus 1. S5 equal to S1 star S2 and S6 equal to S4 star 2. The live range of uh, S1 is from 1 to 5, why? It is defined in 1 and then it is used in 3, 4 and 5 and afterwards it is not used. So, the last usage is 5, so 1 to 5 is the live range of S1. Live range of S2 is from 2 to 5. So, again observe that uh, S 2 is used here and S 2 is used here and afterwards it is not used. So, live range of S 4 is 4 to 6, 
So, S 3 is 3 to 4 sorry. So, 3 and then uh, you know S 3 is not used anymore. So, we are assuming that uh, it, it is just one instruction and S 4 is between 4 and 6. So, it is used here and here. So, and then we are assuming that it is not used anymore and S 5 is 5 6 again this is the only one which is used and S 6 is 6 onwards. So, these are the live ranges of uh, these virtual or symbolic uh, registers. So, let us look at the interference graph uh, for this particular uh, example. So, now the specialty of this graph is that we have introduced the three registers available R 1, R 2 and R 3 which are the three colors also into this graph. The reason is uh, if there are restrictions that one of the physical registers cannot be used for um, you know a part any variable, then we can actually introduce these nodes and then add an edge between them. For example, here assume variable z which corresponds to S 4 cannot occupy the register 1. So, there is an edge between these two that means, this S 4 node can never get green color. So, thereby it will get a different uh, register. If there is no such restriction, then this edge will not be present and uh, these three variables have an edge between these three registers which are three, three colors will have edges between them indicating that uh, one register cannot uh, occupy the place of the other. So, they interfere with each other, but if this edge is not present then there is no connection between this interference graph and this register interference graph. Okay. So, now there are edges between these two for example, between S 1 and S 3 there is uh, an edge let us see why. So, S 1 and uh, S 3 Okay. So, the, the live range of S 1 is 1 to 5, live range of S 3 is 3 to 4. So, 1 to 5 and 3 to 4 have overlap and that is the reason why there is an edge. So, similarly between uh, other pairs of uh, variables or edge you know nodes in this. So, it is very it is already colored shown as colored, it is very easy to see how to color this you know you can uh, there are three registers. So, you can push uh, this and then this and this you know then you are you will have uh, this particular node uh, this and this all these have uh, uh, you know variables these are all corresponding to variables. So, we can spill this and then this and so on and so forth some order can be used. So, we can spill some of these also. So, the same stack uh, algorithm not spill sorry the color some of these also and then uh, delete these nodes and so on and so forth not spilling I am sorry. So, the stack can be used for uh, uh, pushing these nodes and then uh, you can pop the nodes from the stack and color them as we did before. So, this is one coloring possible there are many colorings uh, which can be uh, seen to happen. So, now uh, three registers are uh, sufficient and no spills are necessary in this particular code. So, nothing more to it in this example. Now, let us see what webs are because these are slightly more complicated than live ranges. Say the definition points in the use points for each variable let us say are assumed to be known. Okay. That means, uh, the d u chain each definition with its set of uses for a variable v is called as a d u chain or definition use chain. And uh, a DU chain is a very useful data structure which will be used later for many optimizations also and it is useful here as well. So, what is a web? A web is a maximal union of uh, DU chains such that for each definition D and U is U either U is in the DU chain of D. So, then it is a web or there exists a sequence d equal to d 1, u 1, d 2, u 2, etcetera d n, u n such that for each i, u i is in the d u chains of both d i and d i plus 1. So, you are looking at this u 1, it is in the d u chain of d 1 and also d 2. If you look at d 2, it is in the d u chain of d 2 and d 3, etcetera, etcetera. So, except for uh, this u n, every one of the others will have such uh, you know uh, du chains before and after 
So, we are going to collect all such DU chains uh, such that uh, the usage is in the previous uh, DU chain and the succeeding DU chain and such a maximal union is called as a web. So, each web is given a symbolic uh, register which is unique and webs arise when variables are redefined several times in the program. So, that we will see very soon. Webs have intersecting DU chains intersecting at the points of join in the control flow graph. Here is an example. So, there is a definition of the variable x here, there is a definition of the variable x here also. So, either this or this will be used here depending on the control flow. So, these are the two inter this definition used chain of uh, this definition will consist of this and this whereas, uh, the definition chain of this definition will consist of only this, but you can see that these intersect. So, w 1 the web number 1 is def x in b 2, def x in b 3, use x in b 4 and use x in b 5. So, all these 4 together form these du, 2 du chains together form a single web. Similarly, W 2 consists of def x in uh, B 5 and u z x in B 6. So, just this simple d u chain. W 3 consists of def y in B 2 and u z y in B 4. So, again a very simple d u chain that is a web by on its own and W 4 is this def y in B 1 and u z y in B 3. So, if you uh, you know place these webs as nodes and then you can look at the interference between these webs also. For example, uh, w 1 and w 3 interfere with each other. So, w 1 is the red one and w 3 is the blue one. So, what it says is uh, you cannot you know these two are uh, overlapping each other. So, it says you cannot give the same register to both w 1 and uh, w 3. Similarly, w 1 and w 4 also interfere. So, w 1 is the red one and uh, w 4 is the black one. So, these two also have overlapping uh, you know uh, uh, the web actually are web overlapping webs. So, you cannot give the these two are active at the same time. So, we cannot give the same register to uh, y and uh, x. So, then you know there is no interference between w 2 and uh, w 3. So, w 2 is the green one and w 3 is the blue one. So, these two do not interfere. So, they can be given the same register as well. So, that is what is indicated by this interference graph. Once we construct the d u chains and then construct the interference graph from the uh, webs the rest of the coloring algorithm is identical as before. So, building the interference graph create a node for each web and for each physical register in the interference graph. If two distinct webs interfere that is a variable associated with one web is live at a definition point of another add an edge between the two webs. So, it is very important a variable associated with one web is live at a definition point of another. So, this is a very important thing that you need to keep in mind when uh, the interference is considered. If a particular variable cannot reside in a register add an edge between all webs associated with that variable and the register. So, these are the restrictions on physical registers not being able to reside in a, you know a, a variables not being allowed to reside in other any particular physical register. Then we come to our we have built the graph now. So, we come to the stage where there is a copy subsumption or a copy coalescing. So, let us understand what this is. So, consider an instruction such as b equal to e. So, this is known as a copy instruction we are copying the value of e into b. If the live ranges of b and e do not overlap. So, we will see an example of how this can happen then b and e can be given the same register same color. So, this is implied by the lack of any edges between b and e in the interference graph. So, now the copy instruction can be removed 
and uh, we can merge the two nodes B and E into one node and uh, the edges corresponding to both of them will be uh, attached to this particular node. So, let us see an example. Here is the copy instruction B equal to E. This is the live range of uh, B before this copy instruction. So, the let us call it as the old B. Now, B gets a new value. So, this is the live range of the new B. This is the live range of E. So, E is active throughout here. It is very easy to see that this new live range of new B and the live range of uh, E you know interfere right. The both are active at the same time. Therefore, we cannot actually assign uh, you know we cannot merge these two. There is no way you can merge these two. There will be an edge between these two live ranges. Whereas, uh, if the situation were to be like this, this is the old B live range and the live range of E ends here, it does not continue anymore. There are no more uses of uh, this is the last usage of E and then onwards there is no more usage of E. So, in other words here is E then it becomes B. So, there is no overlap between these two the new B and the E. So, we can assign the same register to these two and there would be no edge between these two because there is no interference that is what is shown here. So, here is B, here is E, there is no uh, edge between these two and there is indeed a B equal to E copy instruction in the source code. If there were to be no copy instruction in the source code, then there is no point in trying to merge these two. This is possible only when we have a copy instruction. Okay. So, there is a copy instruction and between B and D there is no edge. So, we can merge these two into a single node called B E. So, all the edges which go into B that is uh, from D and from A. So, from D and from A go to B E and all the edges which are going into E that is from F from D and A will now go into B E. So, F goes into B E the other two are already there. So, this is known as uh, copy coalescing. After this, if there were more copy instructions, they are again removed and uh, we try to reduce the graph as far as possible by merging nodes and once we cannot do any more merging, we proceed to the next step. Coalesce all possible copy instructions, rebuild the graph. This may offer further opportunities for coalescing. So, the build coalesce phase is repeated till no further coalescing is possible. So, coalescing reduces the size of the graph and possibly reduces spilling as well. So, now if it since it reduces the size of the graph possibly you know it is just a hunch uh, there is a need to uh, probably spill fewer nodes. So, here is a simple fact regarding the coloring. Suppose the number of registers available is R. If a graph G contains a node n with fewer than R neighbors, then removing n and its edges from G will not affect its R colorability. So, this is a very profound result this is and this is the result on which uh, uh, the coloring algorithm is based, this is the reduction. So, a node n with fewer than R registers R neighbors is removed and uh, then the coloring of G will not be affected, okay. its colorability is not affected. So, if G prime equal to G minus n can be colored with R colors, then so can G. We actually demonstrated uh, this. Now, how is it possible? After coloring G prime, just assign to n a color different from its R minus 1 neighbor. So, that is over. So, there is still a since the uh, degree of the node n which was removed is less than uh, you know r. So, there is a color which is available and that can be assigned to n. So, that is how this is justified. So, so, what is the simplification? If a node in the interference graph has degree less than r, remove n and all the edges from the graph and place n on a coloring stack. This is something we already studied. When no more such nodes are removable from the graph, we need to spill a node. So, all the nodes have degree equal to r or uh, greater than r. Spilling a variable x, what does that really imply? So, spilling implies 
that you load the value of x into a register every time we want to use x and uh, storing the value from register into memory at every definition of x. So, if there are many uses and definitions of uh, x at every point that variable will have to be either loaded or stored from memory. So, there is a penalty associated with uh, such spilling. So, we have to be careful on uh, what we spill, how we spill and so on and so forth. So, now how do we compute uh, the spilling cost? The node to be spilled is decided on the basis of a spill cost for the live range represented by the node. So, Chaitin's estimate of uh, the spill cost of a live range is here. So, cost of V is sigma of uh, C into 10 to the power D and what is the sigma over? It is over all load or store operations in a live range V. So, why are we doing this? I already mentioned that uh, spilling implies loading from memory or uh, storing into memory at every usage or definition point of the variable in the live range or in the web. Now, this considers all the load and store operations in a live range. The cost of cost C is the cost of the operation load or store and D is the loop nesting depth. So, obviously, if the loop iterates only once then the cost will be just has to be computed only once for each, uh, each usage of or definition of the variable. If the loop iterates twice then we have to do it twice and so on. Now, the question is uh, how do we know how many times the loop iterates we may not know this. The equation uses 10 as the approximation over the for the number of iterations of any loop. How is this justified? The point is uh, if there is a loop we just want to make the cost of loads and stores inside the loop much higher than the cost of loads and stores outside the loop. So, for each nesting of the loop if there is a nesting of only one then the cost becomes 10 times that of outside. If there is a nesting of two the innermost loop let us say is uh, inside two loops then d would have become two. So, the cost now becomes 100 for the inner loop for the load and store operations inside the inner loop. So, now there is a difference of uh, 10 for each nesting level. So, this you know in pra practice has been shown to take care of uh, uh, take adequately into consideration the, uh, the variation in cost at the outer level and the inside level. So, people have also observed that making this 10 as 100 or even replacing this by the exact uh, value of uh, the number of iterations of the loop does not really change the uh, spilling or colorability of uh, the graph. So, the node to be spilled is the one with the minimum cost per degree for every node. So, we compute this cost for every live range or uh, node and then uh, you know compute the minimum cost per degree. So, degree V is also known. The idea is uh, what is the degree for example, it interferes with uh, many live ranges. So, there are as many edges as the number of uh, live ranges which interfere with it. So, if you remove this particular node then a number of uh, other nodes which interfere with it will be relieved. So, we want to pick that particular node which will help many other nodes that is why the degree is in the denominator and we want to compute the minimum of cost over degree. This is not the only way to pick up a node for spilling. There are many heuristics which are reported in the literature. Multiple heuristic functions are available 
for making spill decisions. Cost V is as before. So, for example, at 0 V is cost per degree which is the Chaitin's uh, heuristic. H 1 the function H 1 V is cost V by degree V whole square. Well, people have found that uh, instead of degree you use degree V whole square it works slightly better. Again these are heuristics and can only be justified empirically. The third one is H 2 V. H 2 V is uh, cost V divided by area V into degree V. So, this needs uh, some explanation and the fifth one fourth one is H 3 V equal to cost V divided by area V into degree V whole square. So, this thing multiplied again squared. Okay. So, what is area? Area V is width of V comma i multiplied by 5 to the power depth of V comma i. So, and uh, what is i? All instructions i in the live range V. So, the point is, so this 5 is a replacement for 10 in the previous equation and uh, depth is uh, the value of uh, the nesting depth of uh, the instruction i in the live range V. So, what is width V i? Width V i is the number of live ranges overlapping with instruction i. So, we are looking at each live range and each instruction in the live range V. So, look at the number of uh, live ranges overlapping at that particular instruction. It could become different in each case. What does uh, this particular area tell us? Area V represent I want to stop for one minute. Yeah, no problem. <coughs> <coughs> no, 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 it's okay. Fine. Just give me a half a minute and then I will go back to the previous slide. <coughs> okay. Can I begin? So, the width V i is the number of uh, live ranges overlapping with instruction i and depth V i is the depth of loop nesting of uh, the instruction i in the uh, range V. There is some explanation necessary for area V. What is area V? Area V represents the global contribution of V to the register pressure. So, what is the register pressure? It is a measure of the need for registers at a point. See there are many registers which are used at a point and uh, some points in the program require many registers, some other points require very few registers. So, the need for registers at a particular point is the register pressure. So, this area V represents uh, how much is the contribution by V to register pressure and uh, obviously, spilling a live range with uh, a very high area releases register pressure that is it releases a register when it is most needed. So, this is very useful obviously and uh, choose V with uh, minimum H i V as the candidate to spill where if H i is the heuristic chosen and we can also use different heuristics at different points. See for example, why are we using uh, minimum again? You can see that uh, you know the area part is in the denominator of uh, the heuristic functions. So, the higher the area the value of H i V will be smaller. So, if we choose a node with very high area then it obviously corresponds to uh, choosing the node with minimum H i of V. So, we can actually use different heuristics at different points in 
time absolutely no problem as far as uh, heuristics are concerned. And uh, it is also seen that a single heuristic actually does not serve all programs. So, people actually tend to uh, evaluate the heuristics within the program within the compiler. Then depending on the heuristic which gives uh, the minimum value that particular heuristic is uh, used at that point in the program at a different point in the program a different heuristic is employed. Here is an example. So, this is r equal to 3 and the graph is uh, 3 colorable this we already saw before and uh, no problem uh, as far as coloring is uh, concerned. Here is a very interesting example this is a 3 colorable graph, but this cannot be colored by the 3 colored by the coloring heuristic. You can easily see that this is 3 colorable it, the nodes have been assigned values. So, that uh, only 3 colors are used, but just look at the graph structure each one these 4 nodes have degree 3 this particular node has degree 4. So, if you have only 3 colors available to you, you will be forced to spill one of the nodes. It is not possible to color this particular graph without any spilling if we use the algorithm due to chaitin. Here is where uh, others have improved the chaitin's coloring heuristic and uh, those actually will be uh, very helpful in coloring such graphs with 3 colors. So, what exactly does uh, spilling a node imply? To spill a node we need to remove it from the graph and uh, represent the effect of spilling as follows. So, we just cannot remove it from the graph and uh, be done with it. It also implies as I already told you reloading the spilled object at each use and uh, we need to store it in memory at every definition point. So, there is a lot of uh, load and store happening in the live interval live range. So, this uh, set of uh, loads and stores actually create new webs we will see what happens. So, live range and web has been used interchangeably in my lecture now because uh, once you create the webs and the interference graph there is no difference uh, as far as the algorithm is concerned. So, the spilling creates new webs with small live ranges, but uh, which will need registers. After all the spill decisions are made the uh, we need to insert the spill code physically. So, spill decisions have been made, but uh, we have not inserted spill code we just removed the uh, node from the graph and uh, went ahead with the uh, reduction of the graph we did not introduce any spill code, but a physical set of uh, instructions physical you know instructions have to be physically inserted into the code. So, insert spill code now the program has changed completely. So, we rebuild the interference graph and then repeat the procedure and attempt it to color again. So, when the simplification yields an empty graph then select registers. So, this is the process of uh, spilling you know this is a cycle which says uh, try to reduce the graph at some point you cannot do so. Now, spill a node, but do not insert physical code right now continue with your uh, reduction. So, at some point uh, the spilling and reduction uh, yields an empty graph. Now, at that point you actually have to insert the code the spill code recolor uh, rebuild the interference graph and so on and so forth. So, we will stop at this point and in the next lecture we will study the effect of spilling on webs and see how to uh, uh, how it affects uh, coloring. Thank you.